Welcome to this microlearning session by Nurse and Education Network. This presentation is all about the perfect assessment. Key learning outcomes are to introduce and provide an overview of assessments, describe the concepts of competence and competency in healthcare, delve further looking into multi-dimensional model and capability frameworks, looking at different types of assessments and the pros and cons related to them, and sharing some of the key learning resources around assessments. So for the assessment, we're looking into competence and competency, commonly used terms in nursing and in healthcare. So competence is focused on the description of the expected action or behavior. And we'll talk further in the next slide in regards to Bloom's taxonomy and the constructivist, that novice to expert element, and really seeing some of the skills or behaviors we'd expect to see in terms of that chosen assessment. Competency itself is focused on the individual's behavior underpinning that competent performance from there. And we'll again delve further. Nursing healthcare is not just individual performance. There's other aspects such as teamwork, interprofessional elements, communication. It's more complex and dynamic. And again, it depends on the assessment or skill element that we're going to want to assess at that time. So as an educator, we may be called upon to review current training and assessment or create a new training program. And really we need to determine uh, is the end is what needs to be learned, but how do we go about that? What are the levels that are expected of the learner? We need to explain this to our organizations and key component is that the learner understands the expectations as well. So commonly in our nursing constructivist, that novice to expert pathway, we'll use elements such as Bloom's taxonomy, which can look at the cognitive and effective domain, psychomotor aspects to set the educational objectives. What is it we want? Is it clearly just remembering a skill or do we want to see more clinical and critical thinking being demonstrated? Again, we can align this with Bondi or Benner aspects of that dependent to independent scale as well, depending where the nurse is in their journey and the assessment we, we have chosen or skill that needs to be demonstrated from there. So when we're looking into the assessment, some of the key aspects we discussed so far are knowledge, skill development, there's aspects such as the attitudes, delving further into more decision making and problem solving. You know, more realistic elements of not just a single task process. And then also linking this to our professional requirements such as professional att attributes or communication and interpersonal skills across the healthcare team and with clients, families, other people in the healthcare system as well. This quote by MacDonald states that the, we need to see more of the multi-dimensional approach when we're looking at aspects such as behavior, it becomes more complex. And we're not just assessing that clinical skills, it's the cognitive aspects coming in, the effective behavior and linking this with critical thinking. And again, we need to work out are these a single assessment at a point of time or they're ongoing over a time, let's say of a assessed in year one, year two, year three of nurse training, or over the course of time in a clinical placement or across a postgraduate course. So again, we need to assess and review our competency, our assessment chosen to meet the actual specific need of the situation. 
if we're looking at aspects of decision making or attribute attributes and attitudes we also as educators need to be aware of our own subjective views our personal bias and also if we across the educator team or clinical support or clinical supervisors, mentors, they will also bring their views, their biases in as well. So again, that standardizing approach of assessment to assist the learner to understand what actually is expected of them. When we're looking further into multidimensional aspects as well, we can see and assess elements such as in emergency situations, cardiopulmonary resuscitation example of the team aspects and the interprofessional roles, the delegation, the communication, the followership, the team leader roles. It then becomes more complex in healthcare and there's for the education aspect of assessment, there's examples such as the team assessment by Simon Cooper, where we're looking at also the technical and the non-technical skills. So we're looking further into what makes a team leader a role model. The teamwork aspects, we're looking further when we're assessing clinical performance it's not just skills assessment so looking further past competency the educator could look into capability frameworks so we're looking at the combination of skills knowledge values past experiences relating this into the work environment the personal attributes as well as the knowledge and professional skills. So it's really this holistic, this larger view of how individuals manage and respond to change to be flexible. And we're looking further into just a single skill process. We can link this into different situations and elements. So take a look further into capability framework as well. So getting into the actual assessments, so we have a list here and it's not every assessment that's optional, but they're the common ones that we can utilize. And we'll go through some of the pros and cons. So we have the e-learning component, which makes it accessible, the asynchronous learning aspects. It's easy for the educator also to track completion, if anyone needs to complete with completion dates, the system can send timely reminders. So often on an organizational scale, the e-learning is a practical method of delivering education. The limits are, well, how do you know people are struggling? You can get feedback on the number of questions um, answered incorrectly, other aspects, but sometimes the e-learning can be isolated and it's not everyone's preference from there. If we're doing yearly competencies, are you as the educator changing the questions and the focus and updating the resources as well? And it's a lot of time and resources, technical skills go into creating e-learning packages. E-learning can combine with the hands-on process and to create a blended learning experience as well. A common assessment, especially in the undergraduate setting, is the OSCE, the Objective Structured Clinical Examination. It's hands-on, it's in a safe environment. The educators, tutors, lecturer role can really standardize the assessment. Everyone gets the same assessment. One of the arguments about this is it's standardized patients, clients, the healthcare situation is dynamic and people respond differently. So sometimes what it could be is the, it misses the dynamic change in role or response of a real life patient or situation. 
So there's pros and cons of the OSCE. The oral case presentation, the hot case, at the bedside, real time, real life, obviously with consent of patient, family, etc. But it's realistic. It can't be replicated. So trying to standardize, you might have an assessment framework. Um, but the issues, the highlighted assessment aspects will be different for each patient. And, and so there's pros and cons again with that. You can have the exam utilizing either an open or closed book approach, a multiple choice, quick, easy, easier to mark aspects. The essay, read notes, write in more of a traditional formal approach. Sometimes we'll just record their presentations now and upload into the whatever cloud electronic LMS system in the hospital or university setting. Can you use reflection? Reflection, very powerful. But as the educator, you have to be wary of the limitation of prescribed reflection. The learner thinks they will, that you want to hear something exciting and dynamic of what occurred and normally a resuscitation and a life aspect comes into play but we miss the real day-to-day -day communication and power aspects as well so i think we have to be careful of not over utilizing reflection and allow personal space and how do you mark can you really it's mark someone's reflection it's their account it's their personal thoughts but this again real strong learning in thinking back relating to past and learning and developing from highlighted issues you can utilize self-assessment or even peer assessment and support is very powerful as well you can use the practice portfolio building a body of evidence and this is again is helpful in the undergraduate setting where it helps prepare for that professional portfolio development that is required for your nursing registration and a yearly ongoing review and meeting CPD requirements. There's the checklist of a skill task, symbol, tick list, achieved, not achieved, or looking at further aspects, as we discussed earlier of that, the demands of what's expected. The appraisal, commonly in the clinical practice setting, looking at the formative and summative. Again, that process of supporting and developing, putting a plan in place in that formative setting, and then summarizing with clear professional feedback. And these are some of the assessments that can be chosen. And again, it's up to the educator to look at what is more practical in their situation for time resources the learner and the education team as well so here's some key references around assessment please visit us at nursing education network blog for more nursing and health education theory